Hello, adventurers. I'm Courtney. Today, we are traveling 4,000 years into the past to learn about bronze casting in ancient China. The ancient Chinese started using bronze to make different kinds of objects a really, really long time ago, around 2000 BCE. Back then, bronze was one of the most expensive materials to make stuff out of. Only rich and powerful people could own things made of bronze. Why? Because making a bronze object is a tedious and hard job that requires the work of many people. Do you know where bronze comes from and how objects are made from this precious metal? Let's dive in and find out. Bronze is an alloy, which is a mixture of metals. Bronze is a mixture of copper and tin. Where can we find copper and tin? Copper and tin are found in the ground as ore. An ore is a deposit in the earth's crust that contains minerals. Miners dig copper and tin ores from the ground. Then the ores need to be smelted by metallurgists. A metallurgist is someone who is knowledgeable about ores. They know how to extract pure elements like copper and tin from ores so they can make stuff. Then they melt the two pure metals they extracted and mix them together to create the metal alloy bronze. It's like mixing flour, eggs, milk, and sugar to make a cake, only much more dangerous because the materials are hot like lava. During the Shang Dynasty, which was one of the most powerful kingdoms in ancient China, bronze was used to make lots of things, including weapons, tools, cooking vessels, and objects used on special occasions. Bronze was so important during the Shang Dynasty that the rich and powerful were even buried with their bronze objects after they died. To give you an example, a queen of the Shang Dynasty named Fu Hao was buried with 468 bronze objects, including around 130 weapons and hundreds of bronze vessels. That's a lot of bronze. The bronze vessels found in Fu Hao's tomb varied in shape and size. Some were round and others were square. Some had three legs and some had four legs, propping them up so a fire could be built below them for cooking. Some vessels were used for cooking or storing food and others were used for beverages. Some of her vessels were even made in the shapes of mythological animals and owls. No matter the shape or function of the vessel, all of Fu Hao's bronze vessels were decorated with a motif we call Tao Tie. A Tao Tie is a mask of a mythological animal that includes a pair of eyes, a snout, horns, and a fanged mouth. It seems to have had meaning to the Shang, kind of like a logo for a sports team, but we aren't sure what it meant to them. Sometimes little birds or tiny dragons called Gui dragons were also used to fill in spaces around the Tao Tie. But the Tao Tie is the most important motif. In fact, Tao Tie is such an important motif in Shang art that it decorates almost every Shang bronze vessel that has been discovered so far. If the Shang were alive today, maybe they'd even drive fancy cars decorated with Tao Tie. So, we know where bronze comes from, but how is a bronze vessel decorated with cool mythological animals like this one made after a metallurgist has made the bronze alloy from copper and tin? You might be surprised to learn that the Shang people invented their own technique for casting bronze vessels and for decorating them too. It was different from the technique almost everyone else in the world was using at the same time. This Shang technique is called the section mold technique. Let's learn the section mold technique step by step using a round vessel called a ding as an example. First, the artist would make a model of the vessel out of clay. For a round ding like this one, the artist would use clay to make a bowl with three pointy legs propping it up and two upside down U-shaped handles. Next, the artist would carve decoration into the clay model. 
Just underneath the rim of the vessel, the artist would add a narrow horizontal band filled with tao tie, squared spirals, and maybe even gui dragons. Once the decoration was carved and the model hardened, the artist then needed to make a mold of the vessel that would later be used to cast the bronze version. The artist packed wet clay all around the decorated clay model. Extra clay was added at the top so the artist could add an opening with a funnel in the top of the mold. After clay was packed all around the clay model, the artist then removed it from the clay model in sections. You can see this one has three sections. Each of these sections would have an impression of the shape and decoration of the vessel. The clay model was then disposed of and never used again. The three outer mold sections were reassembled around a clay core in the shape of the vessel with some space in between them. The sections were connected to the clay core using bronze rods. Once the mold was ready, the bronze caster could then use the mold to make the bronze version of the vessel. Molten bronze, which looked like hot lava from a volcano, was poured into the mold. The liquid metal filled all open spaces between the outer sections of the mold and the inner clay core. The use of an inner core ensured the vessel would be hollow inside. Finally, once the molten bronze cooled and hardened, the clay mold was broken open to reveal the finished bronze vessel. Well, there you have it. We just learned how an ancient bronze caster in China made bronze vessels. Imagine the time it took to just make one vessel. From mining the copper in 10 ores, from the earth, to smelting and mixing them, and then making the vessel model and mold and pouring lava hot liquid bronze into the mold to create the vessel. It was definitely a lot more work than baking a cake. <laughs>